relationships relationships could be with other people it could be with yourself your inner child it could be with money it could be with time it could be with your calendar it could be with nature with the divine uh all relationships are in some way a reflection of your relationship to yourself your relationship to your ideas your perspective how you see yourself and this life is a school and so relationships are often our greatest teachers but when we remember to not be attached to them when we remember that they're there really to initiate us into deeper liberation and evolution for ourselves back into oneness, then we can move a lot more easily. <clears throat> to harmonize them is really harmonizing ourselves, aligning deeper with our true self, the universe, divine consciousness. And so uh, a lot of you brought up lots of questions and issues, mostly with relationships with other people, and some of you even with, uh, with money, finances, with your inner child. So I'm really excited to share some codes in order to support you and empower you to quickly transform these because it's all perspective. It's all about waking up to the deeper root and it's all within ourselves. Um, the key here is always looking back within, seeing what the reflection is. And that's totally different than blame or shame, right? If someone is being abusive to you, it's not about saying, well, this is your fault. Like, why did, how do you create this? Right. But it's just being curious and saying, hey, what needs to shift? Is there an old limiting belief popping up? Am I tolerating this unhealthy behavior? Am I am I allowing it somehow by not speaking my truth? When you ask the right question, you get the right answer. And then you have the choice to surrender by taking action, by doing what your mind might telling you is scary, but that, you know, in your heart and your intuition is right. And then you advance to the new level of the video game of life. You no longer have to live out that pattern. But if you resist it, what's going to happen? You're going to, you're going to keep repeating the pattern over and over and over again, right? It's not about the other person. You know, one person mentioned they might feel jealous or insecure about their relationship. That's going to keep happening. There's nothing the other person can really do to reassure you of that um, if you don't go to the core within yourself. And if you don't resolve it, um, just like any belief, whether it's negative or positive, if you keep feeding it and resist it, then you're going to create scenarios where something will happen with that person. Maybe it will, you know, even if they're being faithful, you'll see. Uh, so it's really about looking within as to what reassurance your own inner child needs or what imprint might still be needed to be recoded within yourself and when we do that you heal it and so we're going to do a meditation here in a few minutes where your intuition is going to show you one relationship it could be with again a person it could be with yourself with time or money and we're going to do a deep recoding of it and then you can apply this tool to all of your relationships it's a constellation and when we shift one constellation, even if it's with one person, it will shift your relationship to all other people and all other things because everything is connected. So a few of the comments here are really beautiful. I'd love to just touch on a few. One said, you know, duty and empathy to others, pain and suffering, how to balance my energy, unsure over how much to carry the pain of loved ones. Well, the answer to that is you're not meant to carry any of the pain of loved ones, right? When you love someone deeply, you know, you can feel their pain and you want them to get out of pain, but you're not meant to carry it. It's not your responsibility. And when you do that, it only lowers yourself. It lowers your ability to actually inspire and serve them by being a clear mirror and a conduit of light. And so it's about realizing that it doesn't serve anyone to carry other people's pain. The more you let go of your own burdens and you receive more joy and love within yourself, the more you can actually support and empower other people. One other person is saying reciprocity, where are you not allowing yourself to receive or own your own value is a good uh, question to ask yourself, right? You might be giving a lot in a relationship and not receiving nearly as much. And so it's asking yourself, am I blocking myself from receiving in other ways, maybe with finances or receiving compliments. And we'll see that actually it's a reflection of a block within ourselves. 
because as soon as you release the block, either that relationship will start giving you a lot more or you'll realize, hey, this is no longer aligned and you create space for someone that can truly give to you. So it's really asking yourself, where am I still blocking myself from receiving? Is it a limiting belief like I'm not worthy enough or do I subconsciously kind of push away when people try to give me things? And so whatever it is that you've all shared or that you're, you're facing with, it's really looking within and getting curious and tuning into how can I receive more of what I want, right? Whether it's reassurance, whether it's more intimacy or physical touch. And um, I've, I've struggled my whole life. My deepest struggle was with uh, intimacy myself. And I just shared it on a podcast today. And when I really learned that I wasn't really respecting myself, that I was overgiving, that I was trying to help way too many people without feeding myself, where I was feeling guilty for being happy when other people weren't, all those things were blocking me from deeper intimacy and it was being reflected in my different relationships. All we got to do is raise the, the bar of what we choose to treat ourselves with and stop tolerating negative dynamics and negative things that no longer, uh, we no longer realize that we need. We don't need to sacrifice ourselves to get love. We don't need to put ourselves down to get a certain type of love. Maybe that's what we created uh, as a story when we were young with our parents or with school, but it's about letting go of those stories and trusting the universal laws that we don't need that dynamic anymore. That's not what love is. It's redefining love, right? People refusing to pay me when I ask for money, they start having objections. Yeah, that's another good one right? It's really tuning in beyond the trigger, right? Of course, that can bring up anger, frustration, but just even the trigger of that is, is pointing to something within. It's like, hmm, is there a part of me? Is there a subconscious belief? Or is there an imprint from the past where maybe someone took advantage of me that I haven't resolved yet? Because if you haven't forgiven that person that took advantage of you, then you're going to keep attracting people that take advantage of you until you're finally like, I'm done. I'm done with this. And when you shift your level of tolerance, when you're actually saying, I'm not going to complain about this. I'm not going to keep these stories and getting angry. I'm actually just done, right? You're, you're raising your level of respect, your capacity to receive. That pattern will dramatically shift and it shifts really fast because that definitely happened to me. I've had that happen to me in the past as well. I've had many of these things happen to me that you have all shared here. So again, um, it's not about blame. It's not about shame. It's just an inquiry, right? It's just always realizing that whatever we want to manifest, if it's not right in front of us, it's because there's a subconscious belief in the way or an energetic block it truly is the same thing. So it's just, we're going to do a meditation to look at, Hey, how can we optimize, right? How can we optimize and learn from the reflection that's currently in our lives as perfect, seeing it as perfect to reflect to us, how we get to shift our perspective or the framing, how we get to redefine what love is or what our relationship to money or time is, right? One of my friends says that your calendar is a reflection of your relationship with time and how much you actually care about and love yourself in that way. It's really interesting when we start playing with these relationships and see how we can optimize them with an open mind and an open heart. Someone else just said, when there are blocks when the blocks work feels too much that I get apathetic, even though deep down there is a drive and belief that it's possible, it's conflicting. Uh, it's normal sometimes to feel apathy. Um, and it's about not giving up. It's, it's really realizing that sometimes you just need to take some space and be alone. Another uh, thing that I see often is sometimes relationships with people, they get overwhelming, they get too triggering. And sometimes we just need to take a reset. When was the last time you took 24 hours off just not talking to that person, even if they're your partner and just being okay with that and being like, Hey, I just need a reset. This isn't about you. Um, you know, I took 12 days without talking to someone a couple months ago and it changed my life. So sometimes it's just that we get so, so much anxiety and triggers, not because of another person, but because it's our body telling us, Hey, it's time for you to be alone for a bit. You need to go to a, this level. It's cocoon to rebirth yourself or just reset yourself for the next level of your life, the next chapter. And so it's also honoring, hey, do we have enough space right now that we need? What is our relationship to being alone, to, to giving ourselves space, right? And seeing if we can optimize that as well. 
someone else has said, I'm married to an emotionally shut down man. I'm still in the marriage. So it's been a challenge. And that's asking yourself, you know, there's two ways. It's like, what are you choosing? Are you choosing to evolve emotionally and spiritually? I feel that very strongly for you. So it's inviting your husband. It's like, hey, you know what? I love you. I still want to be with you. And here's what I'm noticing. I'm still learning myself. Do you want to go on this journey with me? Here are different tools. Here's a different coach that can support you, whatever it is, right? And you're giving them the option. And if they say no, then just accepting that's where they're at, not trying to force them, right? Um, and then it's really just on you to, to ask yourself, does this still feel good? Is this, is this something worth it to me? Does it feel expansive? Does it intuitively feel good to still be in a relationship if they stay in the same trajectory or not? And then you get to make the choice as well. So it's really operating from your intuition and just making it simple and clear. Where are you choosing to go and offering that to the other partner for those that are asking about relationships you're already in? So someone's asking, can you tell us about integration of anger and aggression? Yeah, we've been taught that anger is bad. But anger is actually at a higher vibration than hatred, than apathy, than depression. So oftentimes we need anger to propel us into the positive emotions of courage, of empowerment, of freedom, of, of love and joy. And so oftentimes uh, we are programmed to keep the anger within and be passive aggressive, and then it snaps, you know? And so it's important to, uh, when we have conscious communication with whoever we're communicating with to be transparent, but also kind, right? If you're feeling really charged, you can wait a little bit, get clear, and then open up a container to talk to your partner or friend and then share with the I feeling. You take responsibility instead of saying you did this, which is speak from authority, which is thinking you, you know better than they do. You could say, hey, you know, I'm feeling triggered because of this thing that you shared and there's a voice inside telling me that you don't love me as much anymore. And then the other person can respond. And instead of saying like, you made me get angry, you know, which is a projection, you're giving your power away. You're blaming them for your emotional state when it's always your responsibility. Even if someone says or does something that doesn't feel aligned or feels hurtful, it's realizing that this is a reflection. This is part of your school. And usually they're doing it not intentionally, um, that they're playing out their own triggers and wounds. And when we remember that and we create containers for our communication, we can accelerate the healing process and the clearing process dramatically. Sometimes we just need to go in the woods and scream and do an anger release by ourselves. Uh, so it's very healthy to, to release anger. Someone said, my trust in myself and the universe shattered after an emotionally abusive relationship and a betrayal by my closest friend. I find it hard to surrender to spirit and my truth now, even a few years later. Yeah, that happened to me too. And again, it's, re it's remembering, it's asking yourself the question, did I give some of my power away to them? Were there little red flags or in intuitions that I didn't follow that then manifested? And then you can start seeing the trail of where you started going a little bit out of alignment. And this friend who maybe felt like became an enemy was really another gift from the divine to bring you back on track, right? And maybe we needed a cocoon period where we could then humble ourselves or purify ourselves, whatever you wanna call it. That definitely happened to me. And at, at first it felt like the worst thing ever and I lost trust, but it's really allowing us to regain trust in ourselves, right? Your body, you can just get, you know, you can ask your body, show me a yes. And you might feel expansive and exciting. Show me a no. You might feel heavy or contraction or something is wrong. And now you can use that to ask, hey, should I hang out with this person? Should I go on this date? Should I go to this party? Is it safe for me? And your body knows the future. It will guide you. And that's the basis intuition of clairsentience. As you connect with your guardian angel and other things here, which we'll actually do in this meditation, you can get visuals sometimes or, or messages and deeper knowings and different senses. So it's about trusting that this was an initiation for you. And I'm talking to everyone here who's been betrayed or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's an initiation to create more space to trust yourself more deeply. Because when we're not fully honoring and listening to our own intuition, we're betraying ourselves in a way you could see it that way. And so it's 
Also remembering that we're not a victim, we're actually an eternal, indestructible spirit, an eternal awareness. And so we have many lifetimes and it's stepping outside and letting go of the victim mentality that someone wronged us when we can see the deeper, like, hey, this isn't an initiation. Like we came here to do big things and this kind of asteroid came, it seemed really bad at first, but it's there to shake things up and open us deeper for our capacity to trust, for our capacity to surrender to spirit, to receive our, our mission and not get distracted or limited by certain relationships or whatever it is. So I invite you to look at that and that's something we can work on in the meditation. Someone said, I feel that I'm not open for any relationship because in past I suffered so much. Uh, and that's, that's, again, it's really realizing that also it's not your fault. Our genetics, our parents, sometimes they've suffered so much too. So we just have a, a template that's a little distorted. And for me, like I was on the autism spectrum, I could barely uh, have a relationship to any degree with anyone. It was, it was so excruciating, but I didn't give up. Sometimes I just stayed alone for a bit to reset, but it's really just how can I have a better relationship with myself? right? I needed to actually learn how to respect myself, to speak lovingly to myself, to be the parents that I've never had. So that's a great place to start and let, let go of the story that, and, and the definition of relationships from the past and realizing it's always responsive to how you treat yourself, to how you see yourself. And that's what we're going to really work on at the core of it today here in just a minute. And this will be recorded. Someone just asked. How do you know when to leave someone you still love and care about? And then after this, we're going to dive into the meditation. We'll, we'll answer more questions afterwards. But again, you know, sometimes it's like, should we work on this? Should I lean into it or should I leave? It's really, you know, from a logical perspective, are they willing to communicate respectfully and are they open to feedback? Are they open to do the work with you? Right. If they're not, that's a red flag, right? Because you are. So, uh, but a, an even better answer is always follow your intuition. You know, what is it inside? Sometimes it's hard to get a clear signal because we're so in it because we're attached, right? Um, so when, when we have that, it's also realizing why are you attached to this person, right? Doesn't mean you have to leave them right away, but it's realizing just attached to you being true to yourself, right? And that's what I want to get to. It's really about aligning to the universe, aligning to love within yourself. I choose to respect myself. I choose to not tolerate this and this and this. And now see, as you communicate that, is that other person or whatever it is matching that? Or are they at least open to shifting it and doing the inner work, right? If they're not, then be okay. Let the universe self-organize the constellation of relationships around you. It gets hard when we're attached. We keep the brakes on while we're trying to drive. The universe is really driving us. It's not us but we have the choice to put the brakes on if we want, it's free will. So it's letting go of the brakes and trusting, hey, what's the worst that can happen? They leave us, they'll freak out because you're speaking your truth. Well, that's part of their process then. That's not your responsibility. The number one thing people do is they take responsibility for other people's emotions. They're holding on there. They can feel like, oh, they'll get mad. So I don't wanna say this, but now they have control over you. It's a puppet string. You wanna be free. You wanna be happy, be yourself. It's so easy. Uh, it took me a while to learn this myself, but it's really that simple. So I'll leave you with that. We're going to do an activation now so you can all experience this deeper with whatever relationship pops up. So in a few minutes, you're going to get an insight. Trust your intuition. It's going to be either a person or some type of relationship with anything in your world. And that's what we're going to focus on and trust that by doing that and uprooting that into a new loving harmony with yourself, that's also going to help the constellation for all the other relations in your life. And of course, we can totally go deeper um, with some Q&A after this meditation and at our retreats and, and in the mentoring, we go super deep into this in many ways for anyone that's called. So let's take a deep breath together and let's shift to a meditative stance, whether you want to sit or lay down and go ahead and close your eyes when you're ready and we'll begin. Go ahead and start by taking some gentle, deep breaths in through the nose and exhale out of your mouth, all tension, just letting it go.
Imagine a beautiful, calming, golden light above your head, like the sun starting to shine on you and relax your mind. Release all tension and energy. Activity. nose into your mind, exhaling all tension, all darkness, commanding all negative energies, entities, agreements, cords, anything that is not aligned with your highest good to be dissolved into this golden light, return to love and release from your mind, body and soul. Now take a deep breath, make a sigh, let it go. Ah, <sighs> You can shake your body a little bit. One more breath. Release any residue. Just fully let it go. <sighs> Good. You can feel the energy start to buzz in your body now. Recenter yourself as the golden light enters your throat, your heart. Just filling your whole body up from head to toe with this golden energy of love relaxing you even deeper, aligning you with your true self, divine consciousness, breathing it into your arms, down your hands, welcome it into your waist, into your hips. As it lets go of any judgment, any shame, automatically releasing it into the earth as you feel more powerful, more calm, ready to receive clear messages of your intuition, feeling it go down into your feet and fully filling up your body, becoming a golden star yourself, glowing, expanding your energy field. Remember, you are so much more than your physical body. You're an infinite awareness of love, And now we're going to call on our guardian angel. We each have an angel that's here to protect and guide us. So you can say out loud or in your mind, guardian angel, please come and guide me. Show me the one relationship I should focus on now to transform. Just trust whatever pops up in your mind now. And I want you to call that person's soul, or even if it's a concept like money, just visualize or imagine it in front of you. And just take a deep breath, see what happens. How does it feel, the current connection? Now let the soul, that energy in front of you speak to you. What do they want to tell you the most? Just listen. Remember to breathe. And now check into your body. Where on your body are you feeling a charge or emotion? Just take a breath into your body. And we're going to ask that part of your body What do you need in order to feel more harmony in this relation?
Now call on your guardian angel and have him or her touch that part of your body to reveal the root cause of the disharmony, seeing a flash of white light and show you, it could be a memory, it could be an insight. What is the root cause? Now, whether you see a memory or a concept, go ahead and just give that energy a hug. Just take a deep breath, open your heart. And let the angel remind you of the truth, that it's not your fault, it's just a lesson. That you are innocent. Speak to yourself, speak to your inner child, receive the truth. Use your breath, breathe in pink light now of compassion, breathe pink light into your heart and breathe out judgment, breathe out the story. Whether you feel victimized, whether you feel you did something wrong, just realize that life is a school, that this world has a lot of darkness, but it's here to teach us, to make us stronger. So ask the power of love, the angel of love, to take this story and let it go. Ask your angel to free you from this story because it's no longer real. Only this moment is real. As we awaken from the dream, let the pink light dissolve the judgment, the attachment to the past, that's still playing out in our lives with three deep breaths, breathing in the pink light, forgiving and seeing the gratitude, seeing the gift that's realigning you to awaken for your deeper purpose. Keeping your heart open and saying to yourself that part of you, thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Deep breath. Two more breaths. Deep breath in, surrendering to love. Exhale, let go of the tension. Just let go of the story. One more. Deep breath in, choosing love, smiling. Exhale, let it go. And one last breath, this time hold your breath. Take a deep breath in, hold your breath as long as you can. Don't let go. Focus on your heart. Starting to expand beyond your body like a volcano about to explode and tell your heart, I choose to open you to all that is. My heart is open. I trust and surrender. Keep holding a few more moments. Smile, feel, let it happen. There we go, expand, free yourself from the dream. Divine consciousness is taking this all away. 
You don't need to do anything except let go. Let love take it. You don't need to hold on to anything to protect you. By letting it go, you open your eyes. Intuition is guiding you. Not the fears of a younger version of yourself. So there it is. It's letting go. Feel that spaciousness. Feel that energy buzzing through you as you take your new breath of life, of freedom. And now let the angels come in and recode your subconscious, your cellular memory. So just feeling all these little fairies come in and just moving the energy, just enjoying, just smiling, just for just a few more minutes. And it's just letting it move by just surrendering. It just means accept this moment, whatever you feel. Trust that it's perfect. Everything that happened is preparing you for what you've asked for. There we go, just letting it happen, just relaxing. And in a moment, your angels are gonna show you a beautiful scene of you having a harmonious relationship. Now it might be a different person or thing, or it might be the same. It's more important than the energy. So what does it feel like now? See the future memory of a beautiful harmonious relationship with whatever type of relationship you first received. Take a deep breath, feel that energy. How good does that feel? That's the frequency you're downloading into your cells now. Just like drinking water to a plant that needed water. Breathe in that harmony, that love, that healthy, powerful relation with this energy, with this pure source of this energy. Let it into your face, into your heart, into your shoulders. Let go of the burden. This higher vibration releases the residue, anything left of that old story. Because it always wins, the higher vibration automatically transforms the lower vibration. So just focus on feeling it, breathing into your belly, into your legs, into your arms and hands. Enjoy this beautiful frequency of a truly healthy relationship of harmony, of peace, of love, of honor and joy and abundance. Focus even deeper, breathe it in, stay focused. And you might visualize, what does that look like? A glimpse or two of the future. What happens next? What's the best that can happen? Seeing yourself celebrating success, love, freedom, breathing it in. And now choosing this, telling the universe, I choose to have complete harmony in this relation, sending it to the angels, please reroute my life. I detach from any particular concepts or people, jobs or things. You're just choosing the best possible outcome. Let the universe take care of the how. Take a deep breath and let it go now. Good. Now ask divine consciousness to align all relations in your life, that to all friends, to your partner, whether they're here or not, to your finances, your mission, your business, to time, to nature, to the divine, to your angels, all relations to all things, I ask to be fully optimized and aligned with love. Deep breath, send it out to the universe. Now feel the energy in your body. It's already shifting. Now just surrender again. Things are moving. Just take a deep breath, smile. Hold your inner child. Look at your inner child before you and say, no matter what happens, I got you. I promise to speak to you every day. 
and give you what you need. I understand if you lost some trust. That's normal on this planet. But I'm here to build it back and show you that you can trust fully. Because I love you. And life loves you. Deep breath, make a sigh. <sighs> Give your inner child a hug. Feel that trust reconnecting. There we go. Just let it happen. You did it. Just, just feel grateful for whatever happened. Whether it's one step or a hundred steps, just take a moment and say thank you. Trust that you are guided on your next step. And so the last thing we'll do is ask your guardian angel, what are the next actions I need to take? Listen. And gently returning to the physical body, take a moment to write down anything that came through. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. You can turn your video back on if you'd like. And we'll take a few minutes to just answer a few more questions. This is just a small taste of what's possible when you tune in to your angels. And you can easily transform any relationship as long as you stay detached from the form and simply honor your intuition and make decisions based off that. Once we decide, then the magic happens. You have to ask for what you need to the universe. You work your magic from the back end. Sometimes you don't even need to have it on the front end. I've had people write letters and burn them, not send them to their mom who they haven't talked to in 20 years and then she'll email back a few hours later, heal the relationship. Anything is possible. It's taking responsibility within ourselves and making clear requests to the universe, building our connection back to trust and the universe and then seeing the magic happen. Seeing a lot of beautiful uh, shares here, incredible. Someone said, I stopped fearing money and now I love it. It welcomed it and gave it a hug. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, money is just energy. Just because some people misuse it doesn't mean you can't harness that force for good and be the steward of abundance for all. And that's beautiful. Yes. cleared giving my power away in my first house. Yeah, so it seems like so many of you have had really big shifts. And again, we just did a very short activation here, just shared a few key points. So you can listen to this recording again. There's many other ways we can do this. This really was just a small taste that came through. Um, but if you'd like to align every single relationship in your life and every type of relationship in your life, um, I would love to support you deeper whether you'd like to do a virtual mentorship or that's actually the theme of our next retreat in early March, Dreamporting Destiny. We're literally gonna go through together every type of relationship and every relationship, even to spirit, to money, to every person that matters to you and not only help clear and align it, 
and within yourself, but help to manifest more of that and the next level of that as well, because it's all about matching that frequency. Once we can find an anchor in that frequency within ourselves, reality is always very quickly responsive to that because we've decided, we've chosen who we really are and we're not operating and emitting from that old frequency, which is our programming and all those things that is our false self. It's not even true. So um, there's a few ways we can play. And of course we have our online mystery school every week that some of you are a part of. We'd love to have you join. You can find out about all our magic at dreamporting.com and you can email me uh, with any questions or if you'd like to get some custom recommendations, just send me an email at info at dreamporting.com and I'll just put it here in the chat. I'm loving these comments here. My father appeared to me and said he loved me. I reconnected with him. Uh, it's incredible. Someone asked how to work when you feel you're not even deserving breathing deeply and you feel so much contraction. Yeah, it's realizing there's just still mud on your windshield. There's still imprints, right? What is still needing to be forgiven? What is still needed to be released? And, and that will release it. You know, I used to be having trouble breathing. It felt so, I felt had the lowest self-esteem. And it's just basically, what are we attached to? Because we're already these enlightened beings. We just had this forgetfulness come in this lifetime. And it's enlightening is just, enlightenment is basically releasing those limiting beliefs and stories to return to where we already are, which is so beautiful actually. Uh, and if you'd like more deeper support, I'm happy to just reach out to me. Um, and I do do one-on-one -on -one sessions in a container for a few people. If you'd really like some pinpoint focus on all areas of your life, upgrading your business, transforming whatever's in the way, and it happens really fast. It's very easy when you learn, learn you know, knowing how to harness the universal laws. It's really like a Rubik's cube. You know the pattern and it can unravel extremely fast and easy. It's just about aligning with the universe and those simple laws. Um, how to do the sessions with me. Um, I work, you know, at least a few sessions together. You can just reach out by email or Instagram and we'll send you the link with all the details on how that works. Most of the time they're just uh, over the phone because I'm in Austin, Texas. So some people like coming here and doing, spending a few days with me or coming to the retreats as well. I'm loving all of these shares as well. Uh, someone's asked, why does the relationship with the self seem to be the hardest one to heal? Well, that's because that's what's been imprinted. And that's why we're here. It's literally the, the self is really the microcosm of the whole universe. So it might seem like the hardest, but it's really all the outer relationships are just reflecting aspects, facets of our beautiful diamond. So it's just realizing, hey, this is the ultimate game. Let's let go of the pressure and actually just trust that the universe is showing us whatever's coming up right now is the perfect thing to work on right now. We don't have to try to figure it all out at once. So when we actually let go and trust the unfolding, let go of the pressure and let go of the attachment of whatever it is you're attached to, it becomes easy because you don't have to resist it. It's just about looking and with an open heart and an intuitive mind asking the angels, for example, what is this? What do we need to look at? What's the solution? What's the core of it, right? That's all we did here. And, uh, you know, in our mystery school, we have a lot of different activations, both recorded and every week um, on all sorts of topics to activate your intuition, to activate your voice, your empowerment, all these things to make it a lot easier for you to move through this process. And yes, we do have this recorded. It's in our dream um, accelerator. It's our mystery school. So we'd love to have you join if you're not a part of it and you can have access to this recording and all of the past meditations as well. You can find it on our website, dreamporting.com. Thank you so much for joining today. I feel so much love on this call. It's been such an honor to share these codes in the space with you. And I would love to dive deeper with all of you soon. So please feel free to reach out, sending you so much love and I'll see you all soon. Thank you again. Thank you so much.